over how to make basic bread. Basic bread to use for sandwiches, grilled cheese, toast, whatever. And I have everything out that I'm going to use. Pretty sure. I double checked. Um, so we have yeast, which this is the active dry yeast. And I'll have all the measurements on a recipe um, picture that I'll add. And also in the description. Um, there's vitamin C powder. This one is optional, but I highly suggest it actually, I add it at the very end while I'm making dough, and I find that it keeps my bread from molding. So fast, because usually if you leave out homemade bread, it only takes a couple days to go bad, if it's not eaten by then. <laughs> and then we have sunflower lecithin. I just found this on Amazon. I have been making bread for a year now straight for my family, and I just got this maybe three weeks ago, and we noticed that it makes the loaf so soft. So this is just a dough conditioner. Um, it is not necessary. Another optional ingredient. Um, salt is a must. Um, I just get this at Costco, but you can find it anywhere, as you know. Uh, Vital wheat gluten is a high protein flour, and it goes along with the lecithin as a dough conditioner. So that one's optional as well. Then we have our honey. You can use raw, you can use whatever you have on hand. It's getting baked, it's not gonna matter. Um, and then we have olive oil for our fat. And then I have water and wheat berries that I'm gonna grind in my mill to make our flour. So in here I have, so you can see the darker, I have the bronze chief. They're a red hard wheat. And I mix um, half and half of that in the prairie gold hard wheat, hard white wheat. <laughs> so I find that I like the mixture. I don't know. I've baked with just regular prairie gold white, and I felt like my loaf was denser, but I don't know. There's so many things that can go into making a loaf like great. So I get it pretty right most of the time, but there's still days that I make kind of a dense loaf. <laughs> and it also depends on the weather. So if it's really humid out or the rain's coming in and it's low pressure, that can affect your rice as well. So you wanna keep that in mind. And then we have the Pullman loaf pan that I use. And this I love. I didn't even know this existed until a friend of mine uh, posted on Facebook using one of these things for her huge family. And I was like, whoa, where'd you get that? It's a two pound loaf pan and this recreates store loaf bread for me because um, when you make homemade bread in the standard loaf pan, it's, I mean, it still tastes great, but it's not like a sandwich shape. <laughs> so I really love this and you'll see by the end of the video what comes out of this. And then when I store it, I have the lock and lock container. It just flips open and I found that the loaves fit really good. I try not to make them too tall, because um, sometimes they'll poof up. So sometimes if they're too tall, I just squish them down and they'll live. It, it doesn't matter, it doesn't really matter. So I will go ahead and I will get going on starting to mill our wheat. Okay, so I have my Como Mio mill. And if you don't have a mill, you, there are so many to choose from. Um, you really have to do your homework on them. Before I got this one, I had a Nutri-Mill, and that one is more of a, it has a bowl that sits in under the, the stone area, and you had to take out the bowl every time you wanted a small amount of flour or a huge amount of flour. The bowl was great. I mean, it was a great mill for what it was. It just wasn't something that I liked as much as this one. <laughs> So I had that one for about a year, and then um, a friend of mine told me about hers and was showing me it, and I was like, man, that would be so nice. And I talked my husband into selling my other one, pay for this, because they're not cheap, but they are a great investment. So don't look at them and be terrified. Think of it as an investment in your health. And this just has a hole that sits on top of the stones, and you just pour your berries in here, and there's an on-off switch here on the side. It's a heavy little machine. 
and it's really simple. So if you want to change your drying setting, you can turn the bowl. And I have it at my normal low setting for milling flour for bread. But I do all sorts of stuff. I do um, damp corn in here. I've also found like a setting that I like to use to do cream of wheat for my kids and us. We all really enjoy it. So this one, they're all going to be noisy. Some people say some are noisier than others, which I'm sure they are. I just haven't really had that experience, but I mean, they're grinding these hard <laughs> berries. So I'd say they're going to be loud no matter what. So don't let that deter you. Um, let's see. So I guess I'm going to turn it on and show you. All right, so there's our I usually do a little more than three cups of wheat berries just so I know I have enough. So, and as you can see, it gets a little bit of dust around the rim, but it's not full blown dusty, so that kind of shows you that it's not going to be a crazy dust bowl mess. <laughs> so, we'll just pull that aside and I'll move this over. And then here we have soft flour with the whole berry intact, like whole food, why not? <laughs> Great idea. Alright, so now that I have the Bosch over here, I am going to move this over just a little bit. And so before I got this, I actually had a KitchenAid, which I can't complain, I love that thing. And they are much prettier, but I guess like as you get older and you start doing stuff like this, my mind goes like, okay, get rid of the pretty and be wise, right? Just get something plain, but a workhorse. So I still, I mean, overall, this is not hideous. So, <laughs> but it really, it's so similar in size. I think I had the six quart KitchenAid and I think this is a six and a half quart bowl, but it's just the way that the motor is from the bottom. So it handles the dough a lot better, especially the whole wheat um, than the KitchenAid did. I, when I started making bread with my KitchenAid, I did not want to burn my KitchenAid up. Like, it got really wing, 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 and really hot sometimes, and I was like, whew, because right now I'm doing a single batch, but I tend to normally do a double batch, um, and I will turn a portion of it into like breadsticks for the day or dinner rolls. This recipe is basic, but it's so versatile. Like, you can make. What am I thinking? Like little pizzas, biscuits, you can really do whatever you want. My kids sometimes, if we have like a little hunk left over from something, they'll just fry it on a pan and do butter and brown sugar and cinnamon. So really you can use it. Oh, another one is donuts. We'll make donuts. <laughs> so that's a fun one that we like to do. So it's nice to just make more than you need sometimes because you can always share. Um, we like to share with my parents that live nearby and my sisters so and my husband's family you nobody is gonna say oh I don't want that right if you bring fresh bread fresh anything they're gonna be like oh, thank you <laughs> so don't be afraid to make too much um, you you'll figure out what you go through so I'm gonna let's see where am I gonna start I do this so much but it's so weird teaching it <laughs> so I have a cup and a half of water so some people like to use warm water and I kind of stick with lukewarm because your flour which I said over there I'll grab it is warm from the milling process so you don't want to do like to the max I think it's like 115 degrees Fahrenheit and then it starts killing your yeast off so you don't want to bring it up to that and then add your warm flour because I did that once no it killed the yeast I had no rise I was so sad because it's, it's okay if it doesn't work out. I mean, it's bread, it's water and dough. It's not that huge of a waste. The only waste is your time <laughs> because most of the time is waiting, waiting for the rise. And so that was heartbreaking that day, but we still use it for toast. <laughs> so I'm just gonna pour this in here. And I like to um, add the yeast and let it kind of come to life. So I'll just sprinkle it around. If you're not familiar with the Bosch, 
I have the dough hook on right now. And there's a dough hook extender under here for smaller batches. So I sometimes the smaller batches tend to not like move around as much as a double batch, but it still gets the job done. And that extender is really nice. So I'm gonna set this up to the side and bring my flour back. And then I'm gonna add, you can pretty much add, I add the salt and the vitamin C powder last, so I have the lecithin. And it's just a tablespoon, I believe. I don't want to tell you wrong. It'll be right in the description, but you know. <laughs> and then my oil. Now I didn't put honey in a container like everything else because I wanted to show you a really cool tip and trick, whatever you want to call it. And I'm also gonna jump in the vital wheat gluten. Sorry guys if I'm on or not, I'm so new at doing this, but I really want to teach people how to do this because it's good and it's fun. So back to that honey trick. So if you have oil and honey in a recipe, you know how this likes to stick. So if you have your oil in your container, you're just going to pour it in and squeeze it in. So I need a third of a cup. So, I don't know if you can see that, it just kind of rolls around, that oil gives it a nice barrier. So it literally pours out and you don't have to worry about how much is wasted on the side of the cup. So I thought that was cool to learn. Put that up the side and then I like to just give it a little mix and I'm not used to it this way. So. I made the mistake of, I use this lid once I add my flour because I feel like it just gets in the way at first. But one day I covered it. Don't do that guys. <laughs> because how I explained, the water is kind of warm, the flour is kind of warm, and then you're just trapping in all the heat and epic fail, I killed the yeast. And once again, I did not get a rise. So I'm trying to share these tips with you so that hopefully you just and learn from my mistakes <laughs> and get a good loaf without the silly mess ups but I guess you live and you learn so that's fine so I like to just kind of add it around and you don't want to add all your flour all at once because depending on the day like I explained earlier in this video if it's the moisture in the air is high or whatever it just you get used to what the dough is going to look like and feel like. So you want to kind of go from there and make sure it's coming off the sides of the bowl. So incorporate this a little. So while I'm doing this, you guys could share if you have done bread before or if this will be your first time ever and if you are new to milling or, or not. What I like about my Como compared to my um, Nutrimol that I had because it was kind of a pain when I messed up and didn't do enough flour. I had to get the big old dusty bowl out again just for like a quarter cup of flour so that was a little annoying but this i just got my shirt <laughs> um you can literally like you need a handful or you can put a, a measuring cup under it so that's really nice That's one of the biggest things I love about this, is just 
how easy it is to get a little more flour. So I have had no regrets from switching from the Nutri-Mill to this, if you're wondering. And they have all kinds of different colors, so it's fun. It's cute to leave on the kitchen counter. Some mills are, depending on what you get, it's kind of funky looking, so I, I like that it's fun. <laughs> Alright, let's try this again. All right, so now that it's kind of combined, um, let's see, I can just grab some and show you. So it kind of looks like this, and it's just not too sticky, but it's just moistened. But I'm gonna add, I forgot to add in the salt, <laughs> which that's okay now, it's still early. Um, and then this is the time I also add in the vitamin C, and it's literally an eighth of a teaspoon. It's the tiniest amount, but it makes a really big difference. So. And then I'm going to go ahead and add this part on. Remember, do not cover it fully. And then we'll turn it up to two and let it need some more. I'm going to show you guys how to do a simple stretch test when you're making bread so that you get a good loaf without tearing and holes in it. So you're just going to take and test a small piece and you're going to just keep going around and around until you get a smooth, very thin, almost see-through piece. See how that light is coming through there? And then there's no holes, so that's gonna give you a really nice stretch when you're making your loaves of bread. So, very simple. But it was something I didn't understand what, what it was until I started making bread and looked into it, but it really did help. So what I used, I just wiped it out, and I'm just gonna spray it with Olive oil, around, and I will take this dough out, just pop this out. I think the best part about bread making is the dough. <laughs> like, I don't know, maybe some people don't like the texture, but I enjoyed playing with play dough as a kid, so it's pretty fun. And I usually just, kind of, I don't even know if it's necessary, but I ball it up and then I'll put it in the bowl. Can I do that? And then spray it on top. Just so, okay, so our dough has doubled or about doubled. Sometimes I get a little impatient, I don't know. So I already sprayed my table with some olive oil and so a tip I learned at a bread making class years ago, and it makes so much sense, you don't want to use flour. A lot of recipes call for you to spread flour and shape it and all that, but use oil because you're not adding new gluten that has to develop. So sometimes that can give you like a crusty outer edge or different things. So you want to keep it just all the same. So I also spray my hands some more and then I just kind of wipe it around here. Now if I do a double batch, I will have like my little food scale out and I'll weigh out two pounds. This ends up being a little more than two pounds, but since it's just one loaf, um, I'm not gonna weigh it out. It'll just be a little extra today. So um, I'm just gonna show you how I shape it. I don't do anything fancy. Some people have like a super shaping te technique, which I think is cool. I just haven't got that part down yet. <laughs> so basically I just kind of take it out and after you punch it down and then I just kind of tuck it all underneath and make it a kind of round circle and then just kind of make the top smooth and then I just kind of grab at it and it reminds me of like a Subway um, sandwich loaf. <laughs> But I just kind of work it down, kind of you're wanting to go the length of your pan. And I just do it and try to keep it even, tuck in the ends. Because as it does its second rise, it's gonna fill out and bubble up, which I hope my time lapse will work. I wanna play around with that and hopefully we can get all right, so I also forgot to mention earlier that during the second rise, I like to use the time to clean up, do other stuff I have to get done. I usually like to use the second 
or the first and second rise times for stuff like that instead of coming back to a huge mess after your turn to enjoy your bread and go about your day. <laughs> so I also like to, during the second rise, about halfway through, which is usually 30 to 40 minutes in to the rise, I like to preheat the oven and get it nice and hot. All right, so our second rise is done and I just put it in the oven and um, it's at 375. I had it preheating a little extra while we were waiting. But look at how much that rose and then it'll even come up a little more while um, it's baking so we'll see you in about 28 minutes all right so now the, the bread is done I've taken it out of the oven I usually let it sit for a few minutes just to rest in the pan um, and then in this Pullman loaf pan look at how pretty these loaves are and these will give you the most um, store-bought look if you're trying to achieve that because sometimes switching to homemade bread in the smaller loaf pans doesn't give you that feel when you're like making grilled cheeses and things so I really like these pans <clears throat> and I'll link below in the description where to get them so these are the best because they literally just come right out and um, I just set them over here to cool and then at this point you can usually flip the bread real quick with your hand and not get burnt. So, and here's how the bottom looks, but that won't matter when you cut it. it I'll show you how that works. So, you can cool on a, on a rack, but for this video, I'm going to show you um, bread slicing. So, you can either freehand it if you want to do it while it's warm, only do it if you're going to cut with an electric knife, otherwise it will tear up really bad. <laughs> so that's a really good tip. Um, if you ever have wondered what these are at a yard sale, I don't know. I used to see them and be like, what is that? And there wasn't a box with it, it would just be this plastic. So once I started making bread, my mom told me that's what those are. So they literally just slip open. Like this and I just set the bread in there and then use my electric knife to cut a piece so look at all that steam it's so hot and it smells so good I think I don't even know what is better when you make homemade bread Eating it or smelling it while it's baking. <laughs> and it's so soft. I don't know if you can see that. That's why I really like using the sunflower lecithin and the um, Vital Wheat Gluten flour. So here's a normal piece of bread that I usually get with this pan. And um, here's the lock and lock that I store it in. And again, you do not. Well, I guess I didn't even say this. You want to wait until your bread is completely cool before you cool it or put it in the lock and lock or any bag or container because any little bit of steam is going to condensate and make it go um, well, either soggy or just bad faster. But I'll just show you real quick um, how this fits in the lock and lock. This one might be a tad tall, so it'll kind of smush it down a tad. right in there all sliced up so but we want to get it out of there right now so we don't get it all steamy <laughs> and then this just can be over here and now is the perfect time to do some butter I like to do this without even toasting it when it's fresh it's so soft and scrumptious I either do um, jelly honey you could do yeast eggs and pepper. I like to do that combination. But today we're just gonna drizzle some honey. And you can use whatever kind you want. <clears throat> and that is 
is how you get homemade bread. Okay, one last thing, well actually two last things that I forgot to mention was if you are unsure if your bread is done in the oven, I have one of these little meat thermometers and I just stick that in and you're looking for a temperature of 190 degrees Fahrenheit. That way you know you're not going to get a gummy inside. So I can link where to find one of these if you don't have one already. Also, these are like obsolete <laughs> if you can't tell by the box. So either look around at yard sales this year. If, I think I paid like a dollar. Um, otherwise you can go on Amazon and I can link below um, in the description where you can go find those like wooden ones, plastic ones. So you can find whatever suits you best. And I just really hope this video helps you um, with questions you've had about making bread. And if you have any other questions, just comment below and I will try my best to get back to you quickly. And I just wanna say happy bread making and I hope you do amazing.